Good evening. I'm reading about Thomas Trunce Traumer, who won the Nobel Prize in 2011. Does anybody know Thomas Trunce Traumer? It's oh, Pierre Pearl, of course. Uh, <laughs> that's good, a few hands. Um, he was born in 1931. He's a Swedish poet. And uh, it's, his poetry has been translated into many, many languages. He's praised for um, the accessibility of his work. Even in translation, his poems are absolutely um, accessible and available. The imagery is clear and um, his references to the Swedish uh, landscape and the seasons um, is atmospheric. I um, don't want to talk too long about him without reading some of his work, which is the point of what this is all about. So here's one called Breathing Space July. The man who lies on his back under huge trees is also up in them. He branches out into thousands of tiny branches. He sways back and forth. He sits in a catapult chair that hurtles forward in motion. The man who stands down at the dock screws up his eyes against the water. Docks get old faster than men. They have silver gray posts and boulders in their gut. The dazzling light drives straight in. The man who spends the whole day in an open boat moving over the luminous bays will fall fast asleep at last inside the shade of his blue lamp as the islands crawl like huge moths over the globe. <laughs> He's, um, <coughs> I just have a few more little notes here about him. He was translated by Robert Bly first, who he met back in the 1950s. So first they were friends and Robert Bly was at the beginning of his career in translation at that time. And um, in 1990 he suffered a stroke which left him partially paralyzed and unable to speak. However, he continued to write poetry and has even continued to play music, which is quite gorgeous. Um, so I have another poem here for you. On the way, this is called A Part of the Forest. It's a prose poem. On the way there, a pair of frightened wings clattered up. That was all. There you walk alone. It's a high building, completely made of narrow cracks. A building that is always swaying, but never falls. The thousandfold sun slips in through the cracks. In the play of light, an inverted law of gravity, gravity prevails. The house is anchored in the sky, and everything that falls, falls upward. You can turn around there. You can mourn there. There you dare look at certain old truths that otherwise are always kept packed away. The parts I play deep within float up there. Hang like dried skulls in the ancestors' huts on some remote Melanesian island. The atmosphere of childhood around the spooky trophies it's so mild in the forest. Oh, no. <laughs> A surprising piece of information, and this is what I'll conclude with, is that he's exceedingly well known in China. He was published first by Bei Dao, um, the well-known Chinese um, dissident poet who came to um, uh, the U.S. after Chinaman Square. And um, he, uh, Beidou had known him uh, prior uh, to any of this upheaval when Tronstromer visited China back um, in the 80s. In fact, I think he was known in, prior to that, but when he came in the 80s, it, it made a huge wave, an enormous impact in China. And he is hugely celebrated. In fact, poetry translated from Swedish into English now has become uh, a, a highly sought after um, 
um, opportunity. So there's an enormous prize in honor almost of the trans Stromer experience to, uh, um, to succeed at being the next best Swedish um, Chinese um, translator. And um, what he's very well known for is probably one of the more poignant and important um, of the poems that he wrote about his experience in China, Tron um, is The Streets in Shanghai. It's a little long, but it's very, very accessible, very visual. Streets in Shanghai. One, many in the park are reading the white butterfly. I love that cabbage butterfly as if it were a fluttering corner of truth itself. At dawn, the running crowds set our silent planet going. Then the park fills with people. For each one, eight faces polished like jade. For all situations, to avoid mistakes. For each one also the invisible face that reflects something you don't talk about. Something that emerges in tired moments and is as pungent as a sip of viper schnapps and its long, scaly aftertaste. The carp in the pond are always moving. They swim while they're sleeping. They are an example for the faithful, always in motion. Two, now it's noon. The washing flutters in the gray sea wind high above the cyclists who come in tight shoals. Notice the labyrinths to the sides. I am surrounded by written characters I can't interpret. I am illiterate through and through, but I have paid what I am supposed to and have receipts for everything. I have gathered so many unreadable receipts. I am an old tree with withered leaves that hang on and can't fall to earth, and a gust from the sea rustles all these receipts. Three. At dawn, the trudging crowds set our silent planet going. We are all on board the street. It's as crowded as the deck of a ferry. Where are we going? Are there enough teacups? We can consider ourselves fortunate for getting on the street in time. It's a thousand years before the birth of claustrophobia. Behind each one walking here hovers a cross that wants to catch up to us, pass us, join us. Something that wants to sneak up on us from behind and cover our eyes and whisper, guess who? We look almost happy in the sun while we bleed to death from wounds we know nothing about. Thank you.